main thing is fuel tank. That, that's what works going on. Brings us to animal control, uh, Tempi. It was the month of uh, January. I took 10 calls, picked up four dogs, broke three tickets. The shelter is constantly full. I mean, we can pick up more dogs if we had room, but right now, she just can't take any. Yeah, I think at 38 dogs and nine cats right now. Uh, and they're sending some out Friday. I'll just, I'm, Lori just texted me. She's not going to make it. Uh, and they're sending out 14 next Friday and on the 7th of next month, 11 more go out. So, uh, any questions? Yes. Why do we have animal shelters that cannot take in animals? Because they're full. I know they're full, but if you, we have to get our animals licensed, and we have to get them in in uh, in the state and the city licensed, and neutered and spaded. But other people don't do it, and these animals are running wild. But uh, why do we have this? We don't. We have. If I was, Lori Creek's running that out there in the county and the city or. In, uh, just leasing the building out there. Well, I knew I, I had a couple of cats Monday. come out of my house and I called and I asked her if she could come and get these wild cats. You know, because I've had two cats that were wild and I had them spaded because, you know, and she, she said, oh, we're full. I said, well, I'm not going to donate anything. I donate everything every month to the animal shelter, but I'm not going to do it anymore. They can't not uh, oblige me to, to get these cats. I, I can't. I wish, if Lori's here, she might be able to address it better than me. I don't know. <coughs> what the problem is, this stray cat, only time she shows up to have a litter in my garage, she's had three litters, and every one, 12 kids, every one of them's died. And she'll come back around next time and have some more. And, she'll and if I can catch her, I'll get her fixed. And, fix, and I don't want to shoot the damn cat. I mean, I, I, yeah, I got seven That's the problem we got. Neutered. Her having kids in our But garage. we have, it's yeah. a law, if we took our cat, or dog, over to the park and she didn't have a leash on her, or, a, or her tags, I'd get arrested, or, you know, I'd get fined because my dog didn't have it. But these wild cats can run loose. Now, amen. 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 Yeah, I, I thought she'd be here. I said, I just got a text for it. Saturday, <coughs> March the 7th. March the 7th. Saturday, March the 7th. Yeah, on the okay, great. Maybe you need to take your, your stray cat there, March the 7th. Well, if I could get it, I take would. Put a trap out. Huh. Put a trap out. Shit. Anything else for off the pipe? Trap out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, brings us down to uh, fire department. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a whole lot to report, thank goodness. Uh, we did have a vehicle fire call at the old Walmart parking lot, which turned out to be an 18 winter that's got his tires hot on the Ellis Hill. Uh, we did work a three vehicle accident on the bridge over here on 1665 that was pretty serious. Uh, we had an RV catch fire in the side of the RV park across from the hospital. That was a total loss on it, couldn't do much with it. Um, We've had uh, pipeline awareness training this last month. There was two hours of hazmat training for the fire department uh, people. We worked the uh, concession stands for the arena. Our two times that we normally do a year, uh, trying to be involved with the general public. Uh, we are going to have our Easter egg hunt. Uh, we talked about it a little bit tonight. We had fire meeting just before this. We will be doing our Easter egg hunt on Sunday, two o'clock in the city park. And hopefully we'll have something, I'm working on something to make it a little more special this year. What's the date? Say that again. It'll be Easter Sunday. So I believe it's April the... What time? Two o'clock. Two o'clock in the afternoon. It gives everybody a chance to do Easter at churches and be able to get home and then come to the city park for that. Other than that, that's about all I've got. If there's any questions I can answer, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you. 
anything for the cheap web. Thank you. Who brings us to the parks and uh, rec department? Oh, uh, we've been working on the ball fields, cleaning uh, up the sidewalks and edging everything. And actually removed a bunch of dirt from the sidewalks. Hopefully we can get some drainage issues took care of before the ball season starts. It's, it's wet. It's hard to get out there and set the ball field with bases and all that stuff because it's it's been a mess, but we actually caught a couple days here. We'll get out there and do some stuff. Uh, it's starting to look good around here. I mean, the guys have edged all the sidewalks, got them all pushed back, so you can actually see the, they didn't realize the sidewalks were four foot wide. Now you can tell they're four foot wide. Uh, we're working on maybe setting in some power later on here. Uh, we'll, I'll get some pricing and figure out where we get some money, but we're wanting to, I'm going to put in a fire, another fire spot for the vendors and stuff during Archie Fest and, and during Park Fest or any kind of festival we have. We're always limited on power. We don't get a lot of the good vendors because we don't can't get them power. So if we can get some power and get some better vendors, I think we can draw some more crowds. It'll just be beneficial for everything. Lights, Christmas lighting, everything. I mean, you can't go wrong by adding power. I agree. What, what's the location you're looking at? Uh, right in between uh, the uh, basketball courts and the softball fields, okay. right in that area where the vendors usually sit. Uh, we filled in that ditch there. We uh, went ahead and Richard used some of his pipes and stuff that he'd got. We got all that. There's no big ditch there at the end of the basketball courts now. So when yeah. the kids run across the end of the basketball court, they don't have to worry about falling in the ditch too deep. It's all level, moved up. Uh, just trying to take care of all the safety issues we can figure out and get done as much as we can here before everybody starts playing ball and practicing. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, uh, David Calkin had talked to me um, about a uh, uh, having a flag retirement down at the park on April 11th. I talked to Chad about it. I really just need a motion a second to approve that day. He's dropped, he does some drop-offs for, for old flags. Yeah. We're going to leave them in each city hall, Damascus, Fairfield Bay, maybe one at the county, definitely one in Clinton. He's already got it there. So if you have an old flag you need to dispose of properly, you can drop it off at one of the city halls. He did, I just need a motion in a second. Uh, to approve April the 11th, Saturday at 2 o'clock, just to give him permission to have a retirement ceremony down at the park. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve April 11th, take a motion ceremony. Motion seconding, discussion, on I'll ask for a vote, or a roll call. Bradley? Yes. Tracy? Yes. Matt? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Ford? Yes. Chad? Yes. Yes. We did that last year, didn't we? Uh, yeah, he was wanting to. I don't know if he ever. Yeah, yeah he doesn't want to be here somewhere. I appreciate that. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. So you're fine. Yeah. That's all. That's pretty much all I had. Other than, I mean, we're just got a biting weather. I mean, I hope it dries up where we can get the kids out there practicing. I mean, a couple of fields have still got grass on it. But like I said, but it's, you can't hardly poison to do anything until we get rid of some of this rain and get stuff out of the way. So we're going to screw it down. Back in the chair. Okay, you're on the roll. And John's not here on the chair. Again, we'll go back to St. Charles Wilson for a street department. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you, uh, you might not know a whole lot, but you talk about the softball side and you know much about the baseball side of, of the fields. I stay out of the baseball side of the field. Uh, pretty much, I mean, my main concern is the softball fields there at the city park. I mean, we go up to the baseball fields and help bowl and we eat and do the trash and all that stuff. But Craig does an excellent job of taking care of scheduling the, the games and all that stuff. So I pretty much just let him run that show. I know last year, and I mean, I'm, the funds aren't there probably, but we talked about the fencing and the backstops and some of that. I hadn't heard anything. Well, what the pricing on, I got the pricing on the fences. I mean, it was like $9,000, and we just didn't have the money. I, mean, I can get new pricing and all that, but somewhere we got to come up with the, the funds for it. Yeah. I left a copy of the uh, sign-ups stuck on the... Yeah, sign-ups are down this yeah, year, even baseball. 
softball's way down. I'm sure baseball's probably not far from because I think it, last year was 11,000. I think this year it's just like 7,000. Or something. Okay. I know they're way down, down, but we're looking at. They made a bunch of changes, so and with these changes, it may go back up again. I mean, there's no more pitching machines and stuff like that. And yeah, so I mean, everything kind of falls off. It runs its course, and then it turns around and makes another comeback again. So hopefully next year we'll have a good comeback and get all the kids back playing sports again sometime. So you're saying 78 kids are playing no, no. this year? It's 7,800. 7, oh, oh 7,800? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 40, 45, 7,800. <coughs> it's down a little while. You said <coughs> it ebbs and flows. and <coughs> Maybe it'll get better. I hope so. Uh, the park does look good though, working down there. We're getting it slowly. Like I said, the weather <clears throat> ground plays a role in the end of the street boat. So right now we can't get off the south shoulder of the street to, to do a whole lot. We said three tiles. Got three people set up, three good tiles set. We, uh, we so did we, get, I'm sorry, we got the one call on the, down there by Barney. Got, the got the last call today on the electric company. So everything should be ready to start working That's, on that. For replacing that light pole, power pole there in front of the old five and nine burn it's a karate place. And Simpsons, we're gonna put one on each side, put one down in that flower bed. So we're gonna have a couple of solids power pole and something to guy off to if we need to. Might as well do that while we're having one. Yeah, all we're to. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I got the last calls on it today from the lecture company, so we should be in good shape. Maybe we'll work on some How of that. How much are those poles? Uh, we have the poles in the house. Okay. So what does it cost in this one? Uh, just a little bit of manual labor, digging a hole, and then uh, whatever costs us concrete to set it. Build sleeves. I mean, pretty much. I mean, a little bit of time for the street department. Yeah. So, so they're just poles to hang? Just poles. Well, just no, actually, it's going to hold the. There's an electric line that comes through. It's not electric, it's a uh, cell phone. Big power line that goes through. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. the start. So we're putting a metal pole, Peta Jean said, well, let's put a metal pole on the side of that one. Yeah. Well, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. 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 By the in that flower bed and just have one there up against that building. Yeah, that would be a lot better. Have a place to do an arch and yeah. stable. And that's what we're going to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So when we're talking about water loss, I thought, well, 1.6 million, that's really going to make a difference on that water loss. So we went ahead and plugged it in. See, if we found that this next one wanted to be, it dropped it from uh, 39 to 38. So it really did 1.6. So when we come in here and talk about water loss, and I come in, we go from 46 yeah. to 40. That's a lot of loss. I mean, that's, we've really done a lot. So. Uh, I shared that with the with the board, but I was shocked myself when we plugged in that 1.6, and it didn't do it just one point on that. I missed it on the front end. Where, where was the the tank that you're? We on that parish tank. That parish tank is originally put in basically just to feed the chicken plant. Right. Uh, school fights fire off of it. We had all our fire control from school, and then there's only about 21 customers back feed off of that. Sean's one. In the middle of nowhere, I was a little shocked to see that. Sean's tied on to the parish tank line, and then nobody else is tied on to it until you get down to the water plant. So, but we went through there and calculated it out. lucky. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. Sean's, always, Sean's always going to have water. Thanks, God. But, it's on the pool. Yeah. but yeah. anyhow, we. Uh, that was a few water managers before yeah. you. Know. Yeah, I didn't know. We were going out there trying to figure it out. I was really trying to figure it out. But we, we started feeling that a little bit more. So we got to doing the down draft and everything figuring so we've got it not pinpointed but we've got it in the right area it's in the creek crossing and it's just hard to find the yeah we discovered this um about two weeks ago right before all the rain started and we pinpointed it and we had it the final sequence so but we will get back on that we're actually tomorrow when that 16 degree weather is we're trying to walk that and uh she had steam coming up or something we're going to try it in um, we do have the yearly financial report when I got back from office this season. Um, so I did get that from Donna and that will be posted in the paper uh, this next week. So I'll go ahead and have Donna email it to each city council member too. Uh, as far as updates go, uh, the only project we've got going right now is the 65 uh, North project. And uh, it's kind of come on a slow down because the uh, contractors have had to step off and Land water line or had to jump over to do the, the sewer line and die, replacing some sewer line. They're digging 30 foot deep, 45 foot deep, and it's all rock, so it's a little slowed up. So, um, but we did have one instance this last weekend. Um, some of the new line actually busted. It's under warranty, but we had to fix it because contractors live in Russellville, happened in the middle of the night. Um, the whole hillside slid. And is that what it was? You know, you know, side off. slid, and when, and they're saying it's going to do it some more. Mm. So I, we took pictures of it. We kept up the time we had to replace. Um, Highway Department School will reimburse us for that. We'll just have to send the bill down the line. But they also assured me that I assured them that we weren't going to accept a brand new water line that being a warranty for a year <coughs> with a couple of them. So yeah. they're planning on finishing out the project. And then the last step they're going to do is all those slides up through there. They're going to dig them down and they're going to have to do a repair on them. They're going to put rip wrap and everything. And then they're going to leave us an area up on top that'll be all dirt and they're going to relay those lines again. So they will be doing that. So, sure. There's more. Well, actually, that's why we were out. That's why Verizon phone service didn't work. You know, Couple of days ago, that actually the the Wi-Fi or the Wi-Fi, the, wi the, wi the fiber optic actually did go ahead. They've already had to repair one for five days this last month. Uh, that helix slid in our phone line that controls our controls for the Nord pump station. We had to operate that in hand for five days because the phone line was busted. They got it fixed. Well, now the fiber was ahead busted. So that slide caused everybody trouble, not just us. I have a question about our um, commercial uh, water rates. Um, a um, customer called and said that in the month of January his water bill rose about 250%. And I told him just to, you know, it should level. You know, hopefully, like you said, like with three months, kind of give it a little bit of time to. But he said he went from a four hundred dollar bill to a thousand thirty. Hmm. Well, I'm, hey man, my bill last month was a hundred and thirty three dollars, and 
okay. three months ago. I that is, let's, let, let's just, if you don't like comment, I'll, I'll ask for comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Because yeah. we'll be at the end. Oh, we left. One person yeah. talking at a time. So, um, so um, I thought, <coughs> I was looking back on my notes, I thought we had a graduated rate on commercial, like the first thousand, and then thereafter, the a gradual rate increase. And he said that he called the water department, and that's not true. And I saw one of the address. The old system had steps in it. Right. And it was voted that if we take the steps out and go to that higher step and keep it mm -hmm. on the first time. What I'm thinking is maybe he shouldn't be on commercial, he should be in residential. Okay. He said this is a long time ago that he's always been residential. Okay, what type of business is it? It's a personal. I mean, like, I mean. I mean, but is it, had, a, is it a business or is it He a does household? have a business. He does have a business. Okay. But it's, you know, it's chicken house. It's chicken farm. So, um, yeah. but he's Most lots, chicken, yeah, chicken lots, lots of water, water, so that would be commercial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll look Yeah, that, that customer you're talking about, his bill when he had chickens was that high, and then the next month he didn't have chickens, and right. it was $100. So, he, his water bill was high when he was raising chickens. And it'll be even higher probably during the summertime when it's hotter and all that water. Yes. Yeah, but so that's okay. One person talked at a time. I'm yes. sorry, I got a vote. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to address that because I thought that we had we had gone over that with fine tooth comb, like graduated. It, it doesn't go down as you use more water right now. That is something. I don't like, like I said, the first quarter, you know, we can give quarterly reports from the commission, maybe at the end of the first quarter, you know, have an assessment of that, have a presentation. Maybe we can end of March, end of March, early April. Okay, It'll be here before you know it. Uh, anything else on that? I got a question. Uh, where are we at on that pole yard? Project. Is that still that is uh, waiting for bonds. Mm -hmm. So whenever we take bonds, <coughs> that's the first thing on the project list. How much of that been completed? Uh, the only thing we actually like on the polar yard project is to, uh, to uh, actually put in two isolation valves or control valves, and that will actually all the line and everything is there. We we'll just have to put in a altitude valve for the parish tank mm -hmm. to fill at the same time off a million, and also for the polar yard tanks. So it's actually just two control valves. Yeah. Yep. Could we not improve that? Or did we not get the money for that uh, before your time? But yeah, there was the whole I look back, the there was only there was we actually in that fund we still have uh hundred and fifty thousand, but it's gonna take another two hundred thousand mm -hmm. for that. So what's the total cost on that project gonna be? Yeah. I think it I'd have to I don't have it internally, so <laughs> I think it's, I think it was 800. 800,000. Yeah. But it started out at 600,000. Yes, and I, I've looked, I've looked back, well, I've actually looked back, and I've been told the stories that it was told that it was 600, but I have the original drawings in the bid deal, and it was 800. So I was told that the previous manager come and asked for the 600, and he was going to come up with the other way, but I don't know how that was. So. But we do still have some. We have a hundred. Well, I think we have one hundred fifty thousand in that fund for the pole yard. So right now the pole yard pump is still running the way it's always. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We're still filling the pole yard pump from the pump from the plant, and then pole yard pumps are being gallon right now. But now, just to get back around the line that run up six ninety five, is use of using now or not? We are using part of it, but it is not filling the million gallon tank as of now. Okay. If, if we was to open it and fill now, we would, everybody down towards Chalkwell, towards the uh, pole yard, we'd blow the line up, there'd be too much pressure. So we got to put the altitude valve in there. I got you. Well, well, uh, let's say along that line, the pole yard has gone down. How long would a turnaround would that be? You know, we've got to come up with the money, and you know, okay. But it's a pole yard. Yeah. It, 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 you know, it it has it, when it hasn't completed it, you know, you're waiting on that 200000 yeah. shop. Hey, we need to do it right now. Yeah. What is that, five, six-day project? Or, you know, oh. No. Yeah. It'd be a lot longer than that. Yeah. We do, like I said, we do have a way to, to get right. it down there. I mean, we could open a valve right now and get it down there, but we wouldn't be able to keep that valve open right. and blow something out. 
We well, need to get it done. Yeah. It's something you could manually manipulate, you yes. know? Yeah. Okay. That's what I was saying. That's right. I mean, you yeah. get it has happened yes. in the past, and right. we've had man a fire truck for three days to keep the hospital running. Yeah. Um, and that so turns up. With opening the valve, there's multiple ways to fill the tank now. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, wait, for, on that information you have now, what what are you looking at at the time frame of having that project complete? What we've been told to do by the bonding agency is since we've changed this rate to cover these bonds, that we need to at least have two or three months behind us to show the new income flow to be able to cover the rate. So that quarterly will be about right. So, right. so we, this time next year it should be done? That's going to be the part. That is in the ten-year plan. And I will send everybody an updated ten-year plan. Mm -hmm. The ten-year plan that is the number one thing. Yeah, that's number yeah. one. Because it's almost finished. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, anything else on that? Uh, <coughs> so the best part about it is we do have a a backup. If you know we have a, if that pump goes down, we have a way to keep flow. We can isolate valves. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah. That was why I saw a tenth It wouldn't be five days. It's just somebody. Mm -hmm. And we can get the, well, the hospital water because we can actually fill that mini gun tank. Now, once we send it back down to it, if the whole yard pumps are out, then you know we can grab the feed and everybody can stand there. But yes, we can open up valves to get the tank. Well, if it's six months or a year, it's not as that big a deal. I mean, it needs to be done, but yeah. it's not as we bad actually, as two years We ago. actually, uh, last night, uh, we actually opened up that valve I'm talking about to fill customers because we had a break on the 14 inch with the power glitch. Chalk call. Yeah, it chalk call. When that power went off, kicked back on, the pumps hammered, it blowed stuff up inside the water treatment plant, and it also blowed up the 14 inch line out of chalk call. So we got it fixed about 2 30 this morning. Anything else? You need anything on the engineering? Uh, yeah, we actually submitted uh, or are going to submit in the morning a MOA uh, agreement with ARC for the major project. Um, that MOA is a, just saying that we're going to pursue that funding. Uh, it's not the final document. So we'll come back long. here. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and then uh, we also uh, we I think it's the 28th. Or being asked what that MOA does is it's a timeline. We've done it before, but then we put it off a little bit. So on that timeline, we're submitting time that we've got to get to what all the timeline is. We're saying, all right, so the next thing that's going to be turned into ARC would be the engineering agreement. But well, engineering agreement is just asked to saying that CWB is going to be our engineers for this project. Well, they've been doing it. They've been doing it. They've worked on all, they've already done all the footwork. It's just now this is just a document we signed that they are and we submitted it. Could be submitted by the commission. We were just going to ask for a, you know, for a vote from the board to say that CWB was the engineers on the project. I'll entertain a motion for CWB to be the engineer, remain the engineer. So we'll move motion and second. second. Any discussion? Ask for a vote. Yes. 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 We're going to, from now on, start when we start a project, we're going to put it on our water bills. We're going to post it on there. Mm -hmm. Project started this time. We've learned a lot from Customers being upset about the rate, they're not knowing about it. Mm -hmm. I was very old school. I mean, I know I'm young, but we put it in the paper like we required. I realized that's not enough. So anything changes while the projects. From now on, there'll be a little note place where we can put a note on the water bills. So we'll post. All right, we have started. To post, we're starting to finish. The project. And then when that is actually up to date and finished, we'll post. Good idea. It's like your sign. This is your tax dollar at work. Just pay the street. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Uh, anything else for Will? Just to offer a little help from the fire department if you need it. On these leaks, especially on cold mornings where you get <clears> home, <throat> if you get hold of me or one of the guys on the fire department, thermal imagers we got. Oh, are going to hit you up right there. If we could use that thermal imaging in that bad area we've got on that parish tank. On a cold morning, that water's already treated it's warmer than the ground, and you'll find it really quick with the thermal imager. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Just here to help. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Anything else for Will? Thank you. Good to challenge if you anything else. Uh, uh, brings us down to the zoning uh, department. Tim Clark. Uh, the cell phone tower that the mayor's already mentioned on quality drive by the hospital. Does anybody have any questions about that? We've got our FAA approval, airport commission approval, hospital approval. I just have to take <coughs> There, was there like a town hall meeting on that or something? Supposed there was. Okay. And then that's already been done. That's already been done. We're just waiting on these letters from different people to make sure we recover because it was so close to the hospital. That's that. Oh. How tall is that tower? 170 feet. So. Is it going to be right there um, where uh, the trailer usually is?
So, are you saying we are not in a flood zone? Uh, we're all in a flood zone. We are in a flood zone. So all when we get our insurance, we should say we're in a flood zone. Flood zone. But it depends on what flood zone you're in. Like I said, I can spend an hour. Okay. If you ask Noah, we're all in the flood zone. Okay. Somebody, some people are in a 120, 100 year flood plain, which is a special flood hazard area, which everybody's concerned about. Some people are in a 500 year flood plain. Some people are in a 1,000 year flood plain. The banks and the insurance companies, they're concerned about that 100 year flood plain. There's a 1% chance at any given time in that 100 years. It could flood in this area. That's the one. That's that your insurance problem. That's the insurance company. When you get into 500 years, I mean. That's everywhere, though, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. New Orleans. They're only going. They're only going to go to the 100 year and the 500 year. Everything else, they really don't care about. So when somebody says, "Am I in a flood plain?" You absolutely are. It depends on how much it rains in a certain period of time. If it rains enough. And it don't stop raining, it's going to flood at your house. Bottom line, until FEMA turns that wish list, that I mean, everything everybody's excited about, into that paper map, and I, 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 I've got this before you too many times. I just wait and see. I, I'm anxious to see what happens after March the 9th. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got. I, that I that affects everybody. Is, is your property worth years. this, or then you have to have insurance or not? What they showed me was everything I ever wanted. <laughs> Click on a piece. Of, there is no paper mass. You click on a piece of property. <laughs> there's a report. A flood elevation. It's amazing that we still oh rely on the paper map. We are the only one. I, know, in I the mean state. that we have it, but I mean that everybody relies on that for insurance. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. Go ahead and tell them that we're the only one in the state. Yes. The only I, I was the, the only that one at the floodplain meeting in, in the fall when they there were probably. A, Hundred floodplain managers there, and they said, "Is there anybody here still on the old paper maps?" And I'm in the back, and I was like, <laughs> and they look back there, and they said, "Oh yeah, Clinton. <laughs> said, yeah, Clinton. We still are. Everybody else is on the digital floodplain, and a lot of it is based on population and stuff like that. But only thing I know to do is." Well, we all inflated because the Corps engineer didn't clean out that ditch, didn't he? Well, the Corps of Engineers did come in after the flood yeah, and after straightened the flood, out yeah. the canal. And, it, and, and ever since then, we've had periods of time where there was more rain uh, and we didn't flood. And as soon as the rain stopped, the water proceeded. You know, our park gets designed to flood and then the water proceeds. So it is doing what it's supposed to do. and. That's why the new, the newer technology, it's going to help us. It is favorable to us. It's just a matter of <coughs> to the right people and saying, make this replace this, or else. It looks like we're the last one left. They have yeah, well, nothing else to work on. Process of elimination. You think? You think? <laughs> you think? So, what you say to them? Right? I just heard him and somebody. I did. He's on my phone. Nobody can afford to start your phone. Does anybody else have a question about floodplain maps stuff? That's all I have. Floodplain and tower letter okay. Um, you know, another thing is the revised nuisance ordinance that I believe y'all all got, um, <coughs> but I'd like to get approved. And let Let's, yeah, I've got it under new business. Unless you just want to all right, it. No, whatever you like. Right, let's just keep. Get rid of the department reports and, and okay. that cool. Okay. Anything else, officer? Sorry. Thank you. Uh, department report that brings us to old business. A and B percentage, two or three percent, uh, half the group, maybe from motel owners that want to speak. Tony Soyano, you have the floor. I think we know Tony. Uh, thank you. <coughs> members uh, giving this opportunity to talk. I want to present this in a way that it's not be fair for everybody. Now, hotel owners have been collecting 3% or 2%, 3% taxes over the next last 10 years. The money generated is not enough to do really anything with. Members of the MP knows that there's not much there. Now, I'm thinking that if you consider hamburger tax, ugh, it's 
city that had plenty of money to do the thing that was like, you like to put the tennis court field, do your fence, do the Christmas lights. Plus, the, the city needs money for redevelopment, to bring people into this town, to wine them, dine them, you know, lodge them, you know, bring them in here, give them a basement. You will have the money. Now, these are the facts. Sales tax for last year, 2019. The hotels gave the city of Clinton $8,000 in sales tax. The restaurants gave $87,000 in sales tax. So when you consider adding them both up, that's $95,000. If you make it even spread the restaurants and the hotels together at 1%, hamburger tax, the city will have $95,000 a year plus to do something with. With the current 16, 20,000, there is nothing anybody can do with that. It doesn't do nothing. It's just a waste of time. You know, the revenue that's generated from all the entertainment and all the advertising we've been doing has benefited the restaurant. None of the events that we sell, only one, the bass uh, anglers come and stay at the hotel. Everyone, every every event, 100% of them, has helped the restaurants. We only feel fair that the restaurants pay, not just us. We introduce the hand the tax, 1% okay. all across. That's a well laid out argument. And, and, I, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll, I would like you to consider, yeah, would like you to consider, you know, not just throw it out there, you know, go. I mean, when you say it's going to affect the locals, it's not going to affect the locals. Because McDonald's, KFC, you got the Subway, Huddle House, the Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, they don't accommodate the locals. They build their marketing on traveling on 65. If there was no 65, you wouldn't have those restaurants either. Amen. You know? But the people in town don't live or don't stay in the hotel. Right. You know. Hey, that's what you say. But my two hotels, the Sycamore and the hometown, 90% of my customers are the locals. The harder people that don't have much money. I understand yeah. that. So, and they say, you know, nine, okay, last year, $9 million revenue was generated by the restaurants. Now you're going to tell me that nine, almost that $9 million of local money went to the restaurants? I don't think so. And well, the, okay. you don't the have a good thing, hotel. The whole thing is, is I don't feel like if we don't get the maximum amount of the hotel side, how do we try to push the hamburger tax? Make it 1% even. Because the, the money you're getting from the hotel, is you can't do nothing with it. A few events here and there does not make anything. It doesn't do anything. I guess I don't. I'm trying to understand well, I'm, this. Okay. I'm telling you, if ninety-five thousand dollars a year came to the city, what would the city would do with that money? Well, we're limited to what we can do with it. It's A and P money. It can only go for advertising and promotion. Mm -hmm. Depends how you write it up. Talk to Conway. That's the way it is now. No, uh, that's a state. That's, 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 that's a state that's, law. That's a state law. It comes from A and P. That that's you have to be regulated. Those are state. Talk to Conway to see how they model their A and P tax. Well, uh, and I didn't mean to interrupt on you. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's well laid out. I will say this about you: every event we ever have, you're there. So I appreciate you. I appreciate that, and I also appreciate you just laid out. You laid out a good argument. That's just kind of consider how much tax. Are you still on? Hotels that will not be paying you know, by themselves. You know, we already got to the American Hotel Association. It's already lined up in the county for us. Are you still on a motel in Clinton? Okay. I don't have the hotel at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Was there any comments? Yes. I have a comment. If it wasn't for these hotels here, people would not stop in Clinton at all to even to even eat. I mean, we have to have nice hotels for customers to stop here. And, and he does have nice hotels. I mean, I don't know him, but I'm sure he does. But, um, 
you know, these businesses, they're going to, the people are going to stop there and eat anyways, you know, on the way to Harrison or whatever. Uh, hamburger, yeah, tax the hamburger. Well, I don't even eat here in Clinton. I go to Conway. Well, let me, let me clarify something. <laughs> there ain't no good restaurants here. Well, hamburger tax doesn't mean hamburgers only. Hamburger tax is. Well, you tax can tax whatever you want here because I don't eat here. On, on restaurants. <laughs> I know, but a lot of local people do. Well, yeah, so, because that's too stupid to go the way to the AMP, The way the AMP is set up, we can do the tax. The, the city council can say, hey, we're going to do hamburger tax. Yeah. Or we can put it to a vote of the people. The way I would only be considerate to do it is if the people vote on it. The people in the city of Clinton want to vote right. to have that 1% put on there. Well, that's not a vote for Hamburg. Yeah. Yeah. So there. Uh, let's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Anything else on that? Appreciate that. Uh, brings us down to new business. First one is an ordinance for primitive uh, camping. Uh, area within the city parks. Uh, I'll let the uh, Ted about that. Or the guy. Well, look, not really city park. Yeah. That, that piece of property has never been designated to city park. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not. It's not part. It's not considered part. It's of the city. Even, it doesn't even connect the city park itself. And th this is, yeah, this camp and ordinance. And basically, we're going to add a clause to designate the, the mayor, the police, and the police chief as city park. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Okay. Entertain a motion for that. I make Second. a motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Yes. Persons. Yes. 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 We're just striking the word parks and be within the city. Let's get back to it. For all of them. For all of them. For both laws. Not just the title only. It it, it's just the title, actually. Yeah. Um, oh, well, it says whereas the use of enjoyment of the uh, park. Well, yeah, on the, on the whereas or silence. Those whereas aren't really the operative. Room. I mean, it's the title and the, and in this portion, that's the title. Okay. I'm not sure it's correct. Um, sorry, I didn't do a better job writing the few slides. Uh, this is a lot less intensive than I originally intended because I thought we might play out the rules and everything. It's going to be a Project that's kind of trying to forecast what issues are going to come up. I looked at Jonesboro, which has a pretty large city park, and they have long term camp, some camping there. And their code, it's all done within the parks department, just passing the camping rules and things like that. I just, as long as I trust the mayor to say to set this out, if there are issues going down the road, we can always tweak things. But I think this is the better way. We don't have to pay for a survey to properly designate the area and the code and all that. It'll be like you just walk it out. If somebody, if something you just have to glare that you don't like, and you said we don't do that, that way we won't go through it. So, I have a question. Um, if somebody wants to go and camp, they go to the zoning officer or do they go to the no. mayor? There's a pre paid box in a kiosk already set up. So, they'll go up to the kiosk and pay and then set their campsite up. And then, city employees, Monday through Friday, I mean, we're down there anyway. And the police department said they would join in too. And just go in and check the prepay box and see if they paid. If they're not paid, ask them to pay, get their license number and the vehicle, or their information, just name and all that. And three days in, we three days in and seven days out, I believe so we got it set up. So you camp three days, then you gotta stay out seven days. We have yeah. two more months to yeah, you know, to tweak everything. We basically, I mean, we I handed out a set of rules whenever this first started that was pretty well cut and dried, pretty simple. I mean, it pretty well maintains itself, mm -hmm. and mainly it's just to pick up kayak traffic and stuff. I mean, these bikers are starting to really become a big deal. So if we pick up these bikers where they come in and ride for two or three days and spend the night and then finish out their ride somewhere, and, I mean, it's, it'll pull more people into this town and this community. I mean, it's just a... It's going to be a no win. If it yeah. don't work, we'll drop it. We've had people camping out down there for four or five years. Well, no. we just had a bunch of just people that come in and kind of homeless stay yeah. in there, but nobody's ever really stayed well, out there. Well, we should try to avoid that. This, this may help. It may make it worse, like I said, but I don't think so. It would be well, nice to get organized and try it. This is you know, a process. Oh, yeah. Let's see if it, let's go out. Our, our next step, maybe we should go out and lay. Here's what we're thinking, and you come back next month with a set of rules. And, and I really think it'll help our tourism a lot, especially with the colleges and the bikers. And the biking things get to the point now that we're actually going to start selling bikes. So it's a growing thing. We need a vote on that. We have a discussion about this, first rule. Anything else? I'll call for this as well. We're not passing it while we're reading the first reading. What's that? We're not passing it while we're doing the first reading, correct? Correct. We just did. So we don't need it. We don't need it. Okay. 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 There's not a lot. Anything else? We can get a vote on it. We voted on it. We voted on it. We voted on it. All the amendments. First reading. First reading. So, so you guys can pass it tonight, or you can put it off. So that works for the call, you have to do it three games. It's not works for the call. It's not works for the call. So we're good. Good. <laughs> you doubt know, that you need to wait the second, third reading. Uh, that's that's what I'm saying with that. Or you can vote on it next month. I mean, it's just yeah. whatever you want to do. Right. Why yeah. would you wait the second, third reading? If you push it off it's three good. months, you're going to lose camp time because our uh, new season starts in the next three weeks. Our kayak and bike and So we adopt this. Right now, we're the second and third reading, and then we come back with the rules next month.
Well, I mean, we have the rules already written. We'll just come back for them if anybody wants to change it. Really change it. <coughs> if there was something wrong, we would change it. We'd make it on a, a resolution to make changes, right? I assume I'm just going to do one reading and right? go lay it out and get everybody to look at it. Yeah. I'm for whatever. Either way, I'm for whatever. Well, I'm asking you. I mean, I'm going to leave the doctor. What's the timeline you're thinking we're going to, what are we going to miss? Our, our new season starts here in the next two or three weeks. So we wait until next city council meeting. Too late. And this thing goes uh, to April and you start losing the new season. So then you miss three months of possible campers, which I mean, you might not pick that many up. But, and it's going to take a while for the thing to get established. But what this is is just a trial run. Trial run. What does not work anyway? We get into a bunch of problems where we got people that you, you cut it and yeah, you start yeah. away with it and clean it up, do something else with it. Okay, I'm going to take the motion to second the first, second, third reading. Up to the mayor, right? Two. Yeah, well, I'd like to think we'll come back and say this is what we come up with. Do you That's like what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Designate the area and set it up. Okay. Motion second. So I'm going to second third reading. Yeah. No. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Any other discussion? I'll ask for a roll call. Bradley, yes. Hastings, yes. Lynch, yes. Pistol, yes. Warren, yes. Is this the doctor emergency call now? Call emergency call, not it. Motion is about the order. That would be a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to adopt the order. Motion down here. Second. Mm. Second. Ask for a roll call. Bradley. Thank you. Yes. To adopt it. I really wanted to go look at it at first before I did it, but um, it's a trial. Mm -hmm. Then, yes, we can always, you know, dispose like this. So, Amazing. Yes. 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 Or, yes. Okay, brings us up to second uh, item, ordinance for the abate and nuisance improvement municipal code enforcement. Uh, this is ordinance to all the cleanup and uh, size of the uh, zoning officials have a hard time doing. Uh, we'll take the motion to second. Uh, Put on first, second, and third reading. My title on it. So moved. A second. I second. Any discussion? I want to know kind of what the difference is from what it was or what it is now. I thought that usually it would have it in there, kind of what will be, what there was and what's not. I didn't. Yeah. Am, am I wrong oh, on that? Yeah, we, we mm -hmm. want to take a look. Clinton, Arkansas, to abate nuisances and improve municipal code enforcement and declare an emergency. What's the emergency? Let's, we'll, uh, we'll get what, what's the emergency? Where's the life, limb, and, and property? And you stay out of it. Hey, hey, hey. We can John, you can't yeah. do that. Let us discuss it, then I'll ask for discussion from the, the audience. Before or after the vote. I'll, I'll, I'll ask for it for the uh, what way I see this is gives us the ability basically to make a citation it defines what a noose it is the old way uh, we, it was a lengthy process we had to come back talk to the council get permission put a lien on the property it was a long time basic what we're trying to do is just clean up some areas that need to clean up I wanted to make a point earlier about hey it's been a long time trying to give you some teeth to say, we just want to clean this up. It's not something to go around and pick on people. There are some spots that would definitely need some improvement. All this is, 
and I hope y'all share that. My goal in all this is when people come to our town, be it to visit their relatives, or they're here from all over the country for chuck wagon races, they drive through here, and we've done this, all of us in other places, you drive through and say, you know what? And they may have a business in this town, but they live in Little Rock, or they live in Bologna or Conway, and they say, you know what? I can see me living here. I'd like to live here. Not drive through and say, step on the gas, I feel like I need a shower. Okay? And I've had, gosh, I don't know how many people come to my office in the last month and say, yeah, yeah, you need to clean this up. Matter of fact, I don't know who put it on my desk. It was just on my desk, a petition from people just up on, on School Hill to clean this up. We want this cleaned up. I haven't had anybody come to my office and say, you know, Kim, I disagree with this. Let's talk about it. Not one person. And basically, all this changes. All our requirements were already there. They were just scattered out. The grass, the rubble, the trash, all that stuff, the, the inoperable vehicles, it's there. It's just a matter of I'm going to have the ability to write a citation. But when I write them a citation, I'm not finding them. I write them a citation. They get the, they get the opportunity to go before the judge and say, Your Honor, I disagree with this. And then the judge makes the, judge makes the, the call. Do I find them? Do I tell them to clean it up? Or what do I do? It's not me. It's not you. It's the judge. It's no different than Chief Willoughby or one of his boys pulling over somebody for accidentally speeding. I'm giving somebody a citation for doing something that they've been doing for months or years and they know better. And I, I just, you know, I just want people to drive through town and go, you know what? I can see myself living here, retiring here. And, you know, if there's any question about the old way of doing things, I'm going to bring it to you every month and say, hey, what do you think I'm going to do about this? I'm not talking about being picky. We're a long way from being picky. I've got a list of pictures here that if anybody would like to come by and get a copy, yeah. mm -hmm. these are not questionable. These are, oh my gosh, how did this happen? Granted, it's been going on a long time. I'm never going to be unfair. If I'm ever overbearing, yes, it's the mayor's responsibility to the council to go, hey, Tim, mm -hmm. you're overstepping your bounds. Absolutely. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the places you drive by and you go, how on earth do they get away with that? That's all this is. So yeah. the, way, the way it is now, <coughs> you have a problem with, uh, there's, a, there's an issue. Mm -hmm. And you have come to the form, I mean, come to the city council and say, hey, I've got this issue. They won't do anything. I've done in three months. Now what do we do? So the only thing we can pretty much do is put a lien against the house or the mm -hmm. built property. And, but, the, the current code, the problem is he can't take any action whatsoever until he comes to the city council, puts it on as an agenda item, and has the city council pass a resolution declaring that property. Uh, so, you know, 117 Luke Lane, Chad Brown lives, has got the grass growing up to your to your chest. Oh, it's, it's, July. It's, it's, it's July and something needs to be done about it. He's got to wait till the third or the second oh, Thursday to bring it to your attention. Oh, Hope you can take some action. Then he can go talk to Chad Brown and say, gosh, he's using our grass. And so it just really ties his hands. It's surprising when I look through and notice that's what had to happen. Here's the bottom line. If you don't live in the city limits, these are the rules. There are the rules in Greenbrier. There are the rules in Conway. There are the rules in Heber Springs. There are the rules in Marshall. There are the rules in Harrison. So if this is how you want to do it, you can do it out in the country until somebody reports to the EPA and says, hey, there's an illegal dump site out here. So yeah. But if you're going to live in the city limits, we got way too many people saying, that is affecting my property value. 
Well, I had a lady today uh, that called me and she's trying to sell her house. And she said, I have been down this road for, I think, 10 or 11 years. And she said, the city's not going to do anything about it. Now it's time for me to sell my house. I see <coughs> rodents coming out of this house. She mm -hmm. said, I've called numerous times. Y'all aren't doing anything about it. And so I feel for her. I'm always going to go talk to somebody first. Day one, I talked to them. I even took them bags and said, here, here's the bags. You just bag it up and I'll haul it off for you, which I should not do. I really shouldn't. In my position, I should not do that. Tim, mm -hmm. I appreciate and there, it. And, there's, and it's, you know, it's been a month. And I think there's more traps there than there was mm -hmm. before. So, it, it, you know, I will uphold any ordinance that the mayor and the city council wants me to. If you want me to, I will. If you don't, hey, save you a lot of time. I, I'll say this. I, I, I think everybody wants their town clean. And homeowners have a right to have that no matter where. I don't think you'll ever single out anybody. If you were, I, I wouldn't want you working for the city. I do want it cleaned up. I think the best step is to give give you something that you don't have to run to us and wait a month and drag it out. If you if I don't think you're gonna you're on a power trip to abuse any privilege. Personally, but, I mean, I, personally to me, I'm sure we made a decision Concerned on that, as far as if you've got a vehicle there that's not on blocks and it's sitting there, but it's sat there for a year, um, is that a nuisance? Any motor vehicle that's not operable and licensed has to be moved. Because I, I can tell you uh, oh, I hundreds and hundreds oh, and hundreds absolutely. of 30 year old vehicles that are sitting in good shape, but they're setting that will be, now they may not be on the front porch, but they are somewhere on the property. I, I can't see how that, you know, that's an issue. Well, it's probably not an issue, it's when the neighbor starts complaining. When I'm talking to the neighbor, he's going to find out about it. I guess and that's, that's where, you know, I'm trying to figure out is the concern of where, you know, where do you go to? It being a nuisance and where do you not? Right. That, that's my question. Discretionary, is it? Is there, and there's no time limit. I mean, is it the discretion of the zoning official and the council and the mayor, you know, or? I, if there's anything questionable, I'm gonna bring it to you. Okay, that's, that's, that's what I want. If it's, you know, it's on blocks, there's no paint left on it. It's been sitting there for 20 years. No, I'm not going to come. I, I've got to say, I live in the city. I've got one behind my house that's down the hill a little bit, but it's still in the city limits. That's my wife's father's car truck that he died at driving, and she wants to rebuild it, but I don't have the money to rebuild it, and it's still sitting there. Yes, it will run, but it ain't been licensed in 10 years. We live in a dump. <clears throat> 
But I live in a dump. Keep, 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 keep discussion. Oh, sure. Then we'll <laughs> get all the any, any, anything like that, I'm always going to come and I'm going to talk to you. What's up with that vehicle? But I'm trying to and say you're going to tell me I'm going to bring it to the council and that, you know what? Well, what do we want to let this go? They, they, these pictures are not. Mm -hmm. um, a, there, there's no discussion on the no, those are just to drive around, take a little, <coughs> leave the highway, just drive around. Yes, and I'll, yes. And I'll just sort of so pick you back a little bit. I mean, there, there's a there's a concept of prosecutorial discretion. It's kind of the idea we talk about criminal law. And, you know, our chief's not here, but, you know, when he goes off and leaves the meeting for the next month, you got a whole force of police officers that go out there and enforce laws. And one of them is speed limit going through here is 45 miles an hour. I promise you, probably one person that is in this room tonight, I'm not going to single anybody out. One person is going to leave and probably go at least 46 miles an hour. And I can also promise you that person won't get pulled over and get stopped. And the reason is because the officers understand, even if there's someone patrol, the other officers understand we're going to give them a little leeway on, on the enforcement of that. And that's what I would say is also the well, case on this case. I mean, like, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a violation there, but at the same time, we're going to have some discretion on how we apply things. And maybe it might need to be pulled around the back side of the building instead of in the front. I, you know. that, that, that's probably something I would just suggest, you know, just move it. No. So, it's not, so it's not an eyesore. But, you know, for every good reason to leave it, there's probably six yeah. old burned out vehicles that are just, just sitting there. I have, I've brought this up for years and years. I said, there is a business to be made here. My nephew used to do this when he was in high school, him and his friends would take a trailer around and they would go pick up cars in somebody's yards and then go take them to scrap and make money off of it. I was like, because some of these people probably don't have the funds to fix up a car or a way to get it on a trailer to go take it to. I talk to people and like, who's is that? I really don't know who's it is. Right. 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 Two points. So my second thing, real quick, I had somebody call that was over on Terry Lane, uh, Huey Street, that called me that is complaining about a house over there. Do not know exactly where, but it's getting to smelling and things like that because of the trash. Where is Huey Street? Ninety five East, it's right over by my house. 95 East, you turn. Yeah, on H Street. H Street. Uh, did I say Hugh? Is it Hugh Street? It, you I know it's H. Yeah. yeah. Not Terry Lane. I may have said Terry Lane, but that little subdivision. That it, there's just like I said, we're far from nitpicking. We're just. I had the water department call me and say, "Hey, there's a place over here. The trash is piled up so much, we can't read the water meter." It's on top of the water meter. We don't want to touch it because it's full of needles. So what are we going to do about it? It's just piled up. No. Two points I'll make. One is you're obviously it takes some time. Oh, you've been saying it's been sure. eleven and however many years. But you're obviously going to start with the most mm -hmm. necessary cases. Other point is, I think in a positive way, if someone needs some help to it. I'm sure there's volunteers that help. I've got a 16 foot A lot of people do. Uh, people would be glad to help. Yeah. Not come in and tell somebody what they need to throw away. You know, what, what's an eyesore to me, I, I'm very familiar with something like that. Yeah, that, that's not the intent of this at all. No. Uh, and it, you have to start somewhere. And if, you know, if it get anything that, you adopt, you can unadopt it, it gets, but I, I don't see it getting out of hand. I think it's something that's overdue. It gives it gives the zoning official some teeth and time in it, so he doesn't have to just get bogged mm -hmm. down. And I think if you were ever, oh, I don't think you would uh, overstep your bounds. If you did, I'm sure there's six people here that you know disagree with you know stop you. But uh, if you start with the obvious things, and you might find. It turned into something positive. Yeah. You might get some help, you know, that people didn't have. Not that, well, I want to keep that car fine. This is the obvious stuff. This trash, until we get rid of it for you. So I, I'm, I, I'm for it. Anything else on the council? With that being said, I meant to bring this up. When is junk be gone? We're not doing it this year. We're not doing it this year? Okay. 
Can I say anything now? Yeah, well, I'm going to make sure we're done up here. Okay. Can have it. <laughs> uh, anything else from the council? Well, I'll give you a, a follow-up. I'll take uh, comments from the audience. Who's first? John, or you want to talk? Yeah, if I may. Thank you. I'm all for cleaning up the arts. There are some that are looking pretty bad. Um, but what I'm hearing here, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm hearing that Kev's going to come up and cite somebody, and they're going to have to go to a judge. You're not going to talk to them first and find out what's going on? I'll, I'll, I'll always talk to them first. Well, that's not what I'm hearing here. He just said, I'm he hearing did. here he that you're going to go up and you're going to cite these people for a violation and they're going to have to go to the judge. This is after they haven't had the an second or third to understand time the problem and need a review. I'm always going to talk to somebody first. He's talked to these people three or four <laughs> times. So I understand some people are, are a problem and some aren't. Per, on a personal basis, I've had health problems this past year, and I have two two properties, one at home, one here in the city, and they neither of them look very good. Okay, okay. I'd be surprised if at least one of them weren't in your picture. Okay, but nobody's come to me to find out why the yard's overgrown. Okay. And I need that to happen before you go and cite me. I will fix the yards, but it's going to take some time. Am I going to get the time? Or are you just going to cite me, send me to the judge, and get me a, I don't know what your fines are. You'll answer that? Yeah, I mean, I'll, like I said, I'm always going to talk to somebody first. I'm never going to roll up on somebody and go, hi, guess what? Here's a citation. Have a nice day. Never going to do that. I'm always going to talk to them there. If I write somebody a citation, they're never going to be shocked. They're going to know it's coming. I've given them ample amount of time. 90% of these pictures I've showed you, I've talked to these people two to three times over the last month. I'm all, they're, they're never going to be shocked if they got a citation, ever. I'm going to say I'm giving you X amount of time. At that point, I'm going to give you a citation. Please don't make me do that. How much time? How much time? That's fair. That's fair. And? One moment. I, I want to make a comment on that. That's the two points. And I, I appreciate that. The goal is not to. You made a great point. Tell you know, Tim, I do believe in answering that. He said, I'm not just going to come up and write you a ticket. First thing I'll do is go talk to him. And when that happens, you, more than likely, you're going to find out the reason why is it this way. And I think that if this is done right, it gives a good opportunity to get some help on the problem. I've had a couple of free volunteer days. But you know how that is. It's somebody call 911. Until you say, Tim, you call 911, it doesn't get done. I think it would help on a volunteer day if we say, we have three places, not to embarrass anyone or whatever, that we need some stuff moved. You know, and I think that's very doable. Very doable not to single anybody out or try to belittle or humiliate someone. And this is the, the reason is to make this town look better and to actually get started and get it done. Then everybody feels better. Uh, so that, that's my comment. Uh, and it, uh, and may, may I have one question, please? Yeah. What are you going to do about properties that have no structures and are overgrown? There's a lot of properties that there's no structure on them in the, in the city. That, uh, now, if you go up on School Hill and it's lotted off and the grass is growing there, then they're going to have to maintain that. No, I'm, not talking about, I'm talking about sure. other areas. No, no, no. We're not, we're not talking about That's all the down places down. in town that are a wooded area. I mean, there, there's that's that's undeveloped property. We're not, I'm not going to say how you are you more interested in garbage? Garbage. No. Well, I'm, I'm just talking about developed areas. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, me? Yes. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Well, it made me think about it when you were, and, and I remember from last month, the 
when you write a citation or with you when you would write a citation or so is that going to go to the person that's living at the facility or would that go to the landowner um, either you know, or or both i'm just I, you know trying to say because there's a renter the renter don't live here i mean he don't live here um they don't come here very often they get their check every month and then six months later you come back and say hey here's a citation because you didn't keep your place clean it goes to the person living there as much as any either or or both if you're not getting anywhere with the renter you contact the, the, the landowner and you're next so i i, I think john your comment i i don't want to misquote you but watch out for the worms I may have wrote, written that down wrong, but there's a lot of stuff in this, and, and the goal is not to single anyone out. You start with the, the, the obvious areas. It's just I can't I can't read the water meter because they got trash on the top of it. Wouldn't that be an obvious place to start? Uh, and then and I, a lot of people, you know, say, well, I'm not interested in where it starts. I'm concerned where it finishes. A legitimate question. Really, we just want to clean up the town. Yeah. Bottom line. Uh, Madam, and, uh, can you stand up? I just wanted to say that would be to the owner of the property, I would say. You know, the renter, it, the person who owns the property should be responsible for the rental. Well, but place. what I was getting at is, I mean, I'm looking at pictures yeah. and things, yeah. and I know from not so much my personal rental, but I've been in places that they love to, a winner don't want to pay for trash, so they just throw it out the back door. That, uh, amen, I've got it right next door to me. And that is not so much the, the owner at first, that, that you gotta do something with the renter. But the owner should be responsible for the people who they're renting to. I understand that. I mean, they, they if they go by there and see a bunch of trash up to the roof, uh, there is their laws that out. it's hard yeah, to get right. people out if they're still well, paying that bill. But or there's, it's, you know, you can't kick somebody out just because. And my pro and my problem is people who have a problem with the rental property. If it's overgrown or you've got junk on it, you know ahead of time. Clean it up before they you get citation. You said you had two properties. You had one that you know that you're going to get probably well, on the pictures. Well, why don't you clean it up before they get it? Well, because you don't know the certain. Well, right. I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. People well, who know. Why, and I'm not saying. And that. I want to say also, I've had a person at my house come and look at property down Poplar Street. There's a place across the street from me that's a trailer, and it's owned by the phone company, and it's demolished. It's just laying there. They ain't nothing there. Just it looked like somebody came and got parts out of it. And it's just laying there, and the phone company ought to be responsible for it. If the city cleans it up, then we ought to find the phone company for cleaning it up. And there's, a, and there's one down the road also, farther down the road, that was man. burnt. The church owns it, and they're okay. selling it to church the... church don't own it. And it should be cleaned up, too, and the church ought to pay for it. The church does not own it. Huh? No. Well, they, they told me they did. No, they wanted to buy it, so they did. And then crop next door to me, there's a bunch of trashes as high as a house, and rats are living in there. And I've got these little teeny... <laughs> and that's what whatever was, they are, mouse, okay. and thank God I've got yeah, cats. That's what I was trying to, to, was to ask, the, was the, the fact of... And I trash, live in a nice house. I take care issues. of my house have to go to the renter first and then if they can't get nothing or they're not doing nothing then it got you know it should be a responsibility of people who are renting the house to okay. people all right yeah and it didn't turn may want to well i mean it's it's, it's going to be a matter of choose your choose your remedy here and choose the ones that are most effective mm -hmm. um i will tell you that this this code and, and it was the same as the old code uh, any person who permits, causes, or allows to maintain a, an issue that's a nuisance is responsible. So if you're an owner of property and you're allowing your tenants to keep their property to the extent that it's a nuisance, you're responsible for that. If you are a tenant and you are making your pro property a nuisance, you are responsible for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 
I, I agree with Mr. Clark here. I mean, it, you know, either both or or whatever. I mean, either one of them could be responsible for that. And it's probably just going to be a matter of uh, trial and error to figure out what it's going to take to get this stuff cleaned up, and get the right person responsible. I was told it's only going to take two months to do it across the street. Nick said six months. You're going to start somewhere. That's uh -huh. that a good time to start. That's what we're discussing. Uh, you want to go or do you want me to go? You go. Okay, let's get the reality of this. 95% of all the traffic is not going to see the residents on the side of the hill. 65B, 65, they don't travel up the residential area. But you guys are overlooking one thing. People like to store things. Old cars, mm -hmm. they want to store something. What if they live on an inner city block that you guys didn't think about and they're seeing from all vantage points, like myself? I can't store anything outside because then it's a shopping center for whoever wants to steal it. So I have to build a building. You notice I put up carports, I've got things locked up, chained up, and then a building. My garage is packed with my stuff. <coughs> I can't set anything out in the yard because it can become a nuisance to the highway. Or my neighbor down the street that hates me because I put cups in the fence. So, you really need to think about what you're doing because Everybody wants a clean property. Everybody wants a neighbor to take care of their property. He can't be the, you know, the judge and the executioner and sentencing and all. But he can tell them, hey, this is becoming a problem. If you have to, if we're going to get stuck paying the bill because they get a citation because they don't have the money to clean it up, go rent a rollback dumpster and roll it out there and they don't have an excuse to put it in it. Let it sit there. It's a tax write-off for you. They got something to put the trash in and then haul it off. And if they do it again, you send them the bill. And they're not going to pay it. Most people that let their property go to crap and leave trash everywhere, they don't have money anyway. So what are you going to do then? You're going to pay to, you're going to, pay to clean the yard up. We are going to pay for it. The bill's never going to get paid, and they're going to do it again. What are you going to do then? They pay their taxes every year. Can't kick them out of their house. It's a snowball. It's never going to end. You got a big problem, you let people do it forever. And like she said, there's a busted old trailer. I know what, what trailer she's talking about. That thing's been there forever. My neighbor that died, Chester, he had a pickup truck that sat in his front yard. I've lived in that same corner for 20 years. That truck sat there for 16 years before they made him move it because it became a nuisance. That truck was rusted and sinking in the ground, wasn't hurting nothing. Everybody was used to it being there. Everybody was surprised when it was gone. Nobody cared. It was just there. What are you going to do about your pickup when your neighbor down the street says, I can see that truck below the hill from my back porch and I don't want to look at his rusty old truck. What are you going to do then? You're going to make him go put a tarp over it? Build a storage building? Where's people going to get the money to do all this? <coughs> How are you going to get people to keep their stuff where no one can see it? Are they going to, you're going to force them to build a building to keep it? Or are you going to force them to throw it away? Where's their property rights at? It's their property. If they pay their taxes, they can store stuff on it, but they need to store it neatly. I agree with that. But if you give them the power to do this, that's going to make them think that you're going to force them to throw their stuff away. And that is a big mistake. So good luck in figuring this one out, because that's been going on ever since I moved here. It's been going on ever since I was a kid. People used to having stuff stacked around the house. But I agree with the property owner. If you got a nice house next door and you got a junky one next door, that's not picking on them. That's saying, hey, look down this street. Nobody else is doing it. Why are you doing it? You got to do something. So <laughs> you're going to have a mess and you're going to have a lot of pissed off people because you let it go on too long. But cleaning up the hillside over there is not going to encourage people to stop at McDonald's and oh, let's go drive up here and check out the side of the hill. There's nothing up there for them to look at. Most people never go drive through any town. I drive all over the state. You see this in every small town. There's a house chunk stacked up to the top of the house. And then next door you see a really nice one. It happens everywhere. You're going to have a hard time getting people to take stuff they want to keep right next to their wall that's been there ever since they were just a kid that their dad saved. And you're, you're, it's going to be hard to get them to get rid of it. So what are they going to do? If they live on the inner city box, you're seen from all sides like me. Where are you going to store everything? I have to store everything in a building or another carport, as you saw in my backyard. I had to put a carport in the backyard and put my toys up so nobody stare at them all day long. 
I don't want it to be a nuisance. So what are you going to do for those people that don't have the money to build a structure to put their stuff in? What are they going to do? Put a tarp over it? Give them a tarp initiative. Cover it up. Okay, I, I get the... Uh, it, See what I'm saying? Well, yeah. So Because they're going to want to keep it, the but give them an option. Don't say, clean it up or we're taking it and you're going to pay the bill. I don't think we're saying we're taking it. That's the imply that's yeah. being wrong. There's not an option being taught or told. I the think procedure, it's, uh, just to be real clear, the procedure is going to be uh, once the code enforcement officer has decided that there's a violation that needs to be addressed, there's going to be a citation issue. Mm -hmm. That's like an opening salvo. Okay. There's a due process. If the person so should I just go around town and take a picture of all these buildings that's been dilapidated forever? And some of them, the property this city can I, owns. Can I, can I speak now? Yeah, I, go ahead. I started speaking. Okay. So that person has a right to go to court. They're going to have their regular court date. And they're going to have a judge that has been elected by the people. And that's going to hear whatever defense or grievance or whatever they have about the citation. They're going to have their day in court. They're going to have a trial. If the judge believes that the code enforcement officer is incorrect, that it should not have been written, the judge can find the person <coughs> not guilty and not assess any sort of a fine. So, you know, there, there's a process there. And in fact, that person after that can even appeal it on the circuit court and, and go on go on to another to another level. Yeah, but if they don't have financial all the way means, on to the Supreme Court of Illinois. Um, yeah, if they don't have the financial means, though, what is going to be their option? What is the city going to do for their option? What are you going to give them? What's their option? Clean it up do process. or haul it off? We're going to do process. So that's the option. Clean it up or haul it's it off. The same yeah. option they got if they got a speeding ticket. Due process. They go to court and they'll yeah. same the same time. Like it. Like they shouldn't it. live in the city if they don't pick, clean the place. Pick a point. Thank you. Hmm? There's you. Oh, I'm okay. 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 Next job. It's his turn. Hmm? Oh, your turn, sir. <laughs> um, I, I, I wrote all six of you a letter last month. I didn't hear back from anybody. I had a few questions in there that I actually wanted answers to, such as under the current ordinance, uh, the, the zoning officer or the person appointed to enforce the codes by the mayor has the authority to issue a notice when something comes to his attention, in writing obviously, uh, defining the violations at will. And I'm wondering how many, I asked how many of those had been issued in the last five years. Because I keep hearing that this process to get anything done takes three months. But in last month's meeting, Mr. Clark said that some of these things have been problems since he was last employed by the city, which was three years ago. And they, were, they weren't addressed then, he said. So let's say it takes three months. Hmm then what is the reason that the city is incapable of cleaning some of these properties up over the course of three or five or ten years, we're being told now? All I've heard here is a title that we have for an ordinance. Has anybody read the ordinance other than, obviously, the man that wrote it? Yeah. Do, do we know what the... Are we turning this into a, a criminal penalty as opposed to the civil penalty that it currently is. I, I don't know what's actually being discussed because it sounds like instead of coming before the court now, I'm sorry, coming before the city council, we're being told that once you're issued a citation, you're going to a judge instead of the process which is currently in place, the zoning officer, whoever it may be, can issue a notice at his choice. And if that person has 30 days to comply under existing ordinance, and then they come before the city council for a public hearing, and then the city votes to declare the property a nuisance, if they so decide, and then they've got 30 days to clean it up, or the city cleans it up and sues them, or puts it on the property tax roll. It's, what, what is actually being changed? I'm curious, what Sean actually wants to know is what I want to know. What is the difference between what you want and what you've got? Because from my perspective, as I, as I wrote all of you, it seems like you, there's quite a bit of authority there and it's not obvious to me right now why nothing is being done by, with the existing ordinances. They were just updated in 2013 because we had properties that were still destroyed from 2008 tornado. The, the ordinance was amended 
to make it easier to clean stuff up in 2013. Out seven years later, we're being told that it needs to be done again. And I'm wondering what is actually, what's different between what you want and what you've got. And how many of those notices have been issued in the last five years? I really am curious because I figure it's on, it ought to be on record if you're issuing these notices. Can you tell me what your name is? My name is Adam Kuypers. Yes, I read your I read your email and I I'm sorry it. for not responding. Oh, it's, I, 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 I'm I not did looking, intend yeah. to. This is a uh, <coughs> this is that ordinance that I am um, very fond of. I think it should have been enforced, and I'm sorry and I apologize that we as a city have not enforced it. We haven't given our <coughs> zoning officer any <coughs> right, really, any code <coughs> that he can stand on so that he can go enforce it. Um, the mayor, this was one of his uh, pleas when he first ran for mayor that he was, we're ready to clean it up. Mm -hmm. This is a, a beautiful city mm -hmm. and we are proud of it. It is absolutely one of the prettiest places in Arkansas. And I'm not saying that because I'm from here. We get told that every day, but when you're traveling through, you see these things. And mm -hmm. I have them in my neighborhood. Every single one of us have them in our neighborhood. So when somebody property is really nice and they take good pride they mow their yard and they paint their houses and they're proud of their hard earned money that they're putting into their houses and you have a, a house that is right beside this one that maybe for whatever reason they're not taking care of it they don't have any pride or maybe it's a renter or maybe it's a vacant house it's really not fair to the homeowners that's spending their money making their house look good when you have something that's not being enforced. So I think we failed as a city council. I think we failed as a city to give our zoning officers the... Any question? Okay, can I just finish? No, when he's done. Okay. Right. I was waiting my turn. Okay, all right. I thought you were interrupting me. I'm sorry. No, I was I'm waiting sorry. my turn. Um, to, to enforce the law. So really, this ordinance is a little different. It's, it's a little bit more detailed in, in the in the ordinance is what we had before. Uh -huh. What I had what I had compared. Like I said, we failed miserably because we all want it for our city. And I think that most of the general residents would, would want their neighborhoods to be cleaned up if it, you know. I'm, and I'm I don't disagree with any of that, but it's it's not really to the point, I think. I mean I want a nice place to my neighbors are their neighbors. I know what they're talking about. Um, so I don't want a messy city. What I'm asking is the zoning official since at least 2013 and really going back into the early 2000s, the ordinance is quite detailed and it, you know, your current city code says whenever the Clinton zoning official or other city employee designated by the mayor or by subsequent ordinance determines that there are reasonable grounds to believe that there has been a violation of any provision of section one or two he or she shall give notice of such alleged violations to the person responsible therefore and it goes on in explicit and particular detail so I don't know what you're talking about when you say he doesn't have and of course we're not talking about Mr. Clark we're talking about the zoning official whoever it may be. The zoning officials have numerous jobs. This zoning official is also a floodplain. Uh, sure, sure. I, I know he's he busy. Had, I, I, different, uh, every single person that's been in that position right. has had different, numerous jobs under that title. So, How many notices have been issued in the last five years? I don't know. Daniel, would you happen to know how many? Okay, do you know, Tim? I don't know exactly. I can, of course, on my computer, I can only speak for how many I sent out the year, year and a half I was here. It's, it's several warnings, written warnings that I sent out, and they're all I think they're still on the computer. What I'm suggesting is this isn't your fault. I, I don't think it's the legislative body's fault. I think that our enforcement officials have failed us. And Mr. Clark's new, I'm not blaming him, all right? I'm not blaming anybody particularly. I'm just saying, I think that you've got some pretty tough ordinance on the books. And if no notices are being issued, what do you, of course nothing's gonna change. I don't want the place a mess. That's not in discussion here. The question is, what do you wanna be able to do that you can't do right now? That's all I'm really curious about. 
how many notices have been issued in the last five years, and how many have been followed up with the public hearing that the ordinance specifies is to take place at a maximum of 30 days later. I can't remember any. That's why I was, I'm seriously and honestly curious. And now you're being asked to pass all three readings here tonight. It, it seems like a big hurry for something that's been gone unaddressed for 15 years probably, 10 or 15 years. There's been sufficient ordinance on the books to solve these problems. And I, I understand it's your neighbors, it's your constituency you're talking about enforcing against. But there's, there's laws on the books. They're good, they're specific, they're clear. Why can't we just start issuing some notices with the authority that is invested in the officer and was invested in the previous previous officer going back? It's I don't know what you're asking for. I don't know how to find the new ordinance. I looked on your website this week to see if there was like a agenda for the meeting and what was going to be proposed and I couldn't find any ordinance so I could see what the difference was for, for myself because I know what the existing one is and now you're being asked to read all three readings by title only and pass this here tonight. I don't want the place a mess but Mr. Clark's not always going to be the officer, right? He's been the officer before and he wasn't, now he is and he won't be again someday. You're passing laws that don't. It's not always going to be somebody as considerate as Mr. Clark. We don't know who the next person is. You're investing authority in an office, not in a man. And this is some, to me, that we're not thinking in a long-term way. And I really think that it deserves a little more consideration than to read by title only all three readings the night that it's proposed. I've tried to keep... You guys have a thankless job, honestly. You basically volunteers. I got a lot of respect for people that subject themselves to this, like you do as elected city councilmen and women. Um, but it's consequential what you're doing, all of it. And I want to see the city prosper. I want to see it succeed. But you need the community. You can't do that yourself. And it'd be really helpful, I think, if you led by example. And I say that because the city owns property and the city is in violation of its own code. And it's entirely in your power, the city's power, to fix those things. You got dead, a, a roller been sitting at the park, right? Yes. You got L and E Auto behind Canada Abstract. No, it's a dilapidated sure. building. Yeah, yes, sir. Can't move it every day. If we could lead by example, I think you could get some buy-in. And you guys really need some buy-in from the community. You need community support. It's, it's been flowing against you. Some of it's out of your control. There's water and all that stuff. I want you to succeed. I want the city, I want the county, I want the community to prosper. I want to vote for you. But I'm not running. In fact, let me say this. Maybe you need to. No. I, want, I want this to work. I want us to have a pretty place. I don't want my place neighbor's place dumpy. But he's been cleaning it up this week. I bet you he got talked to. He's been cleaning it up the last week. Did you notice that? He's been cleaning it up. So you might have enough power. What if we tried the minimum necessary force instead of more teeth? Everybody lives in a story, in a narrative. Individuals do it, and communities do. And we navigate, and we see things based upon the story we tell ourselves and the part we play in and here's a story I don't want to be in. One where I'm looking at you folks and I'm saying, my, what big teeth you have. It's a wrong story. We need a better story. The community is not your enemy. They aren't. The private property owners are not your enemy. You need them. And really, I think, I think you're rushing this. And I think, I think that you can do better. But I appreciate the difficulty of your job. Thank you. 
and I am still curious how many notices have been issued in the last five years. I, I asked that, it's been about three weeks since I asked that, and I was really hoping somebody would be prepared with that tonight, but I understand it's... Well, to go back, I did reply to you. Yes, when I, yes, I contact, yes, Jason did. I wrote Jason and asked if he received it, because I didn't know if the website email addresses worked, so I texted Jason through Facebook. Yes, sir. Any comment on that? Okay. Uh, I mean, my comment with, with it is um, we don't we get an agenda at the first week, yeah. and so most time I don't pick this thing up until the week before. So I didn't know it until I read it earlier in the week, mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't answer. Some oh, of the I, questions that you was asking. I, I understand. So I understand. Uh, I think later, and then Dan, and then John. Me? Yes. I think everybody's kind of misunderstanding on cleaning up the yards. What we're trying to with to Mr. Clark about is it's not what you've got stored back there if it's neat and stored. It's whenever somebody tears a house down. And they leave it, and it stays there, and they have money to clean it up. That trailer, he's got money. There's no reason why that trailer's still there. None. And the one down next that she thought was the church's property, that lady's house burnt, she got insurance money for that house. And she didn't clean it up. She kept the money. They're the people that you need to talk to. It's not what he can't do. If he can't mow his yard, I know somebody that'll mow your yard for free. But what I'm trying to say is, when you have people that have money, that don't spend it on their property, and it brings down their property, or my property, or their property back here, and I don't care what's on the other side of the highway, by the way. I care what's on this side of the highway. But you go down, all of you need to really take a drive up Poplar Street, I just drive down Fraser one, Street, down Poplar, and right behind, down. right in front of the school buses. Trash, trash. I mean, there's no excuse. I mean, if they don't want to clean it up, fine. But if they own that property, then they got the money to clean up their property. I own a rent house, and when my tenant starts messing it up, they get a little talking to, and they clean it up. You can be nice and have your tenant clean up the property. All you have to do is go over and just say, hey, I want this mowed. I want it cleaned up. I'm not going to tolerate it. Put it in the back of the truck and we'll haul it to the dump. But the properties that are torn up and left there, there is no excuse because those people have money. I know McCassett's got enough money. He can take that dog on a trailer and haul it out of there. So, I'm sorry. That's my vote. Oh. Oh, Okay, uh, Dan and John, and let's try to just get to One of the easiest, easiest way to solve this issue is the ordinance he's talking about. The ordinance that he is talking about, there is enough authority already on, on the books. All he has to do is inform the property owner with a copy of that ordinance and show him where the violation is. Instead of threatening him with a judge, you put him in front of you, all of you. And then you do the due process with you, not a judge, because a judge has got other things to worry about. Because you put it in front of a judge, it becomes a criminal issue. It's a civil issue. You can talk to the property owner and find out what options the state can do to help the owner fix the problem. They may have health issues they can't move, whatever's there. They may have no telling what's going on. Or maybe you guys might know somebody that can help that person okay. get him in compliance with the ordinance. But to take the ordinance to him, that's more authority than giving him a citation. The authorities, the, the information, that's what they need. They need the information. Most people in this area don't even have internet still. Or they don't use it. A lot of people don't use it. So give them a paper copy. A few pennies and a copy to solve a problem. And they understand they're in violation. And they can see it and read it. And if they don't understand it, have the zoning official explain it to them. This is what's going to happen. This is the process. If you don't do it, you're going to have to go to the council, and the council is going to talk to you about it. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, you can you clarify that? Yeah, we'll sort of respond to a couple of the issues of, of what, what was wrong with the current one versus what we're doing here. 
um, I don't know, first week of the year, when, when Tim came into the office, he asked to sit down so we could go over code, code stuff. You know, first week of the year, second week of the year. He and I sat down, we went over, and I've known that code enforcement was an issue that was kind of out there and couldn't ever quite get to it. And I, I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I'm with you, I didn't really understand what was going on. And then I sat down and started looking at the code. It's kind of a mess as, as drafted. I mean, there's no way to put it. Um, What's it's that? cut out into a couple different sections. Yes, yes, you've got uh, two it's different kind of types. hard to parse it out. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't like to think of myself as kind of an expert on how this stuff is supposed to be worded at least. Just, because I went to school for a couple of years before. Uh, and I was sitting there scratching my head. I was like, okay, well, because I'll tell you what I expected to see was to see the code that says, okay, if, you got a, if you're a nuisance, you get a citation. And the only reason I expected to see it that way is because how pretty much every single city in the, in the state of Arkansas works. I mean, it's just, we're not, I think it's I think it's a little odd for the city of Clinton. We're a pretty small town. We start reinventing wheels on the way things are working. And, the way code enforcement works is if someone's out of out of compliance and you can't get anything done with them, you have a code officer, you write a citation, and they go talk to the judge about it. Um, what I'm sorry, what did what did you just say? The way it's just kind of like standard operating practice across the state. If there's a code violation issue, a code enforcement officer, you know, needs to get something done. Uh -huh. they get, the step is that we write about we want a code violation, we cite them for that code violation, and they go to. Uh, and they go to court. That's just a sort of and process. And they, just so I understand, you're saying that that's what you just described is a zoning officer or code official issues a citation, and that person is then sent to a court of law as opposed to a city council public hearing. That person is sent to a court of law to for the judge to decide that, and you're saying that that is the standard thing through Arkansas. It is. That's, I, yeah, I, I mean, really, that's just kind of the way it works. I'm not going to sit here and say that I, I've surveyed every single mm -hmm. municipality and stakes I have it. Right. But right. To, to the best, of, yeah, to the best of my uh, my knowledge and experience, I, I can represent to you that that's the way all the ones that I know work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that you know this other remedy isn't out there. Typically, what you see that on though is where someone comes to the council and talks to them about a nuisance and something's got to be done. Is it's, it's when you have a structure that's unsafe, maybe they're worried that it might topple on someone or it might just present a safety hazard in general, and you talk to the city about that, to the council, and usually it's kind of prefacing, asking the council to come out and take some actual action, come in there, clean it up, do some abatement, put a lien on the property, and worse comes to worse, the city has the opportunity to condemn that property and actually take ownership and maybe do something like that. That's where the procedure that you're that kind of exists now, we talk about that's where I see that more often, is because it's those kind of bigger cases. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it's 20, 30 different properties that you've surveyed. If, if we had 20 to 30 different probable cause hearings for uh, nuisance violations set up on this council meeting, mm -hmm. we'll be here till Saturday probably. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just not really set up to work this way. Um, and then the other side of that is, is if we say, gosh, Tim, I wish you quit bringing with so many cases, then when he walks out of the meeting, we're just going to kind of set him free and he's getting paid. I don't really know what he's doing. So I understand what you're saying. Um, and uh, ultimately, I'm not, I'm not a policymaker. I'm just the guy that writes the laws. Um, whether they want to follow my, what I've suggested or what, you, or what you're suggesting, I guess it's up to these guys. Well, it's not what I suggested. It's what the, what exists. What the I, city I has decided in years past. Fair enough. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I, yeah, I'll acknowledge that that's, that's there. Um, it hasn't worked for these several years. And I would, I would represent it hasn't worked because while it kind of seems like it's simple and straightforward, in practice it's not. And that's why we've had several cases where maybe notices of violation have gone out but not much else has happened because it's kind of like, gosh, we really want to have 15 PC hearings at the city council meeting for these people that are trying to run a water system and a road system and all these other things are going to really, I would say that it's the property owner's responsibility to clean their act up and keep themselves clean, just like it's the person who drives their car up and down the road's job to you know comply with the speed laws. And if they're not doing that, then we've got a procedure for them to kind of go through to do that. So to answer your question, sorry I spoke quite more to that, but that's the that's sort of the logic behind this. Um, Tim and I kind of had a workshop to see, you know, because he wanted to take this so seriously and work because he felt like he really had a mandate from people when he came in to do something. And 
both of our opinions was that the way it's set up is just really not working out. And I, and I think that kind of has bared itself out in the South <coughs> years when everyone's sitting here asking what we've been doing all this time. And my, my response and my opinion is that it's because the, the, structure, the way it's structurally set up just isn't really practical. So just so I understand, and I, I'm sorry to put it in this simple of a term, but because it was too complicated, we just didn't issue any notices for the last... We did condemn two houses <clears throat> that the city had to end up incurring charges on. Right. Uh, within the six years that I've been on the council, I know that we have condemned two houses. Okay, great. And um, it cost a lot of money. Right. So when you start finding people, just like Ben said, some of them are not going to pay. You know, you can't yes. get blood from a turnip. But there are laws and there are guidelines to follow if you live in the city limits. So people need to know that you have to abide by the law. So we're trying to enforce the law a little bit more than what we did previously. When but you didn't enforce the law at all previously. We're trying to move forward from this day forward. Kim, one moment. Let me get to this. Kim. Oh. I hate talking with my back to people, but I can't not face the bosses. Um, one example, and I, the way it's set up now, somebody's grass is three feet tall, and it's going to be 30 days before I bring it down. They're going to give them 30 days to clean it up. What a deal. I'm going to have to cut my grass once, maybe twice in the summer, and the rest of the time it's just going to grow. I mean, that's just the reality. And, and yes, I wish it was as simple as go out and say, hey, listen, let's clean this up. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is, and I've talked to numerous code enforcement officers, 50% of the people are going to go, you know what, you're right. I need to clean this up. And they're going to do it. But the other 50% are going to go, you're right, I'm going to clean this up. Because 90% of these people... I have talked to, and they have said, absolutely, I need to clean this up. Mm -hmm. And it's worse now than when I talked to them. Sure. That's just the reality right. of it. And to bring them before the city council, and the city council will say, now he's talked to you, now by golly, you better clean this up. That don't mean any more than me telling them. Mm -hmm. And it may not mean anything to them when the judge says, listen, you clean this up. And then we may have to talk to the property owner. <laughs> and then we may end up having to send the city out to clean it up anyway. Right. But there's a there's a percentage of people that are going to say, absolutely, I'm going to clean this up, and they are absolutely not going to. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. just the reality of right. it. That's but right. when I, I'm not I'm not really talking about grass. Or anything. <coughs> I'm talking about mobile homes that are left burnt down. Burnt down. Oh, I understand. I don't say yeah, I'm, I'm grass. I don't I care. I mow the grass myself. I, I understand. Sometimes in the summer, I mow my yard three times a week. And, and people next door, they've got garbage all the way up to the roof of the house. Right. You know, and, and the reality of it is, my kids ain't gonna clean it up until I make them clean it up. Uh, and that's just the reality of it. Next, uh, John. <coughs> and, uh, 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 and Kitty, you, mm -hmm. John, and then Kitty, and then. I'll try and let's just kind of go just a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. please. I mean, we'll start off my short. Um, uh, we as a nation have fallen into the habit, and you're falling into the trap of we have a perceived problem, in this case, nuisance property, and so we pass a new law. But we have a law already on the books. Rather than pass a brand new one, let's fix the old one. If the old one is workable but it needs the teeth, then add the teeth, but don't write off a whole new law. I, I, I think well, how do you add the teeth? I, I may have used the word teeth what you're doing. when I was talking about Well, time, I'm talking time. about the it, citation and go to the judge and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And if having a hearing here is a problem with all six councilmen and the mayor and, and Chad and everything, <clears throat> how about a commission of maybe three to do a hearing? It could be quick and, and informal as long as it's, it's recorded and a decision made. And if they don't, if the property owner doesn't comply within a reasonable time, I understand that it only gets mowed twice. But uh, I, 
I think when okay. you, Chad, when you first came back in January, that, this is what you started on. Let's get this done, and this is where where we've come to. Kitty. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, I don't know where to start. <coughs> okay, I had a house in Benton, and it went through this exact process that y'all were talking about. In Benton, they've got that the grass has to be six inches. I was in the hospital. They're talking about my house. Right. Okay. The house was vacant, and when a house is vacant in Benton, you're going to get mad. Right. All right. So the place was a mess. They, they hung a citation on my door, red cards. In fact, with a violation, don't touch these cards because if you do, you're really going to be in trouble right. and, and you don't have access to your property and you will be in court. Right. Okay, so I went to court with a tube in my kidneys and sick as a dog, I appeared in court. But what I did is I went around the neighborhood and I took pictures of all the other properties right. that were not in compliance. Why me and, and yeah, and my place looked good because I had just painted it yellow and and the pictures really looked good and the judge leaned over to the code enforcement and says, You don't really want to go to my chambers and talk to me, do you? Straighten this out. And it did, and we got it straightened out. Now let me tell you how the process went. The process went that he he sent me the ordinance. And then along with that ordinance, he said, this is where you're outside that ordinance. Your grass needs to be cut. And you've got something in the yard we want rid of, or whatever. Whatever the issue was at the time. And I'm going to give you 30 days. You don't get it done in 30 days, your butt's going to be in court. Well, I cleaned the house up and I ended up selling the house. And and it all worked out okay. But the point of the matter is, there was enough teeth in there that the enforcer had the ability to get the job done. And that's what that's what we're lacking right here. Right. We've got the ordinance. Now, he needs to have a badge and he needs to have the authority to say, look, I'm gonna give, this is what's up. Here's the ordinance. Give it to us so they can read it. Here's what I want you to do that's outside that so that they know the ABCs. In other words, if it's your grass or if you've got trash or whatever, say, okay, John, this is what I want. You've got an old bicycle out there or you've got an old tractor. I, I get the point. Whatever. Get the you know point. what I'm saying? Yeah. So that they know exactly. I'm giving you 30 days. Come talk to me. If you can't do this, come talk to me and we'll see what we need to do. Can I interject something? What would your process be? My process is going to be I will go and find them. Can okay, I mean to say you've done it? Thank you. I will give them. I already planned on giving them. You can finish. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just um, I'm going to give them a copy of the ordinance okay. and give them a certain amount of time. Here's the ordinance, and I'll even read it to them if they want me to. Talk to them at first, Talk and, to then, them. and then I'm going to tell them why they're outside. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, in list uh, writing in writing. This is what you this is what your property mm -hmm. is. This is what I want fixed. Yeah. Do you think Absolutely. do you think the process and, and do you think that we're offering here will help? Obviously what some of mentioned what we've been to is not working. Uh, and I, I I would see it as an issue of timeliness. I'm 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 I'll I'm tell listening. you that if you if you can take it and you go sit in district court one day. You don't want to go back. Like I so, said before, I mean, if you're in violation and you can take it and you have to go to court, just, I could probably just gonna put the mayor it. and the city council, if I write a citation to somebody, they are not going to be surprised. They are going to know it's coming. They have been talked to. They have been getting a written warning. They have been <coughs> had given the ordinance. And when I pull up in however many days, two weeks, three weeks, 30 days, they're going to go, that guy's fixing to find me. Nobody's going to be surprised. Why don't you just take the Well, and that, that, and they would be, some people would be lax, but when that ordinance, when you plainly state that if this is not done within 30 days, 
you are to appear in court, yeah. such and such. And then if they call him and say, okay, I got it done within 30 days, there's no court. We can cancel the court at that point. But if they don't do it, then, it goes, then they're going to have to stand before a judge. And believe me, when people are, uh, when people are threatened with going to court, they're going to get their yard cleaned up. But it's got to be enforced. We can't be mealy mouthed about this. Right. Or we're never going to get this town cleaned up. Thank you. No. Uh, anything else for the council? Does, does it, real quick, back to Tom, Mr. Congress said, we know what maybe what the zoning official will do now, but we may not know what he'll do five years from now. Does it need to have in this a, a guideline of kind of, you know, you can't just go straight out to the place and you haven't talked to them and here's your, here's your ticket and go see the judge. Um, I think that would be underneath uh, the mayoral leadership. If, if, Tim decides tomorrow that he's not going to be the zoning officer or the mayor decides to let him go for whatever reason. I would think that would fall underneath the leadership because he's going to come to the council and have certain guidelines without having to rewrite that ordinance every time somebody is, mm -hmm. is new and hopefully abide by those ordinances. The council can change anything they want at any time. Exactly. If I retire or if I, five years from now I have a psychotic episode and I wake up tomorrow with Tyrus, then the city council can say, you know what, we're going to change this ordinance because you're abusing it. And you can change anything you want at any time. And again, you've got an animal patrol officer that has the exact same authority. He can go out and find one loose dog and he can cite someone for having an animal at large. Um, your police officers are not the same authority. They don't have to give someone a warning first before they ride a speeding ticket. I mean, um, it's not really an extraordinary thing that we're giving Tim to do. And, and you, you can draw that in. You can write that in if you want to have a mandated warning before anything happens. Uh, the practicality of life is going to indicate that he's going to try to give people opportunities to fix things before. Because if he writes that ticket, not only is that person going to go to court, Tim's got to go to and I've had Tim there when he goes. So I've got to be there, and I've got to support my case. Yeah. So I think as a council, we're going to be supportive of you, and we know that you're going to do a good job. You're going to be unbiased, and you're going to be kind to each resident um, when you go and see them. I, I, we have, you know, the most confidence that you're going to be doing your job. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I have a comment, man. Kind of what, what you were asking, uh, uh, Adam. This new ordinance basically takes it from you write a citation or, or it will go to the city council or is it going to go to a judge? Yeah. And we're a legislative body. We're not judges. That's not what we do. We don't hear, we don't, when they get a speeding ticket or a violation, traffic violation, they don't come to the city council, they go for a judge. And it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes perfectly sense, good sense to me to change this ordinance to where, you know, Part of the problem with going before the city council is too, we're elected and you know, we get accused of good old boy and, and this kind of stuff and yep. you know, my buddy's over there, that's why he's not cleaning his yard up. It's gonna yeah. take all of that out and then it's going to the judge. And it's gonna be fair. That's and I and I honestly just wondered because I had no way of knowing I, I was really concerned because you come up here and say you're gonna read by title only three times tonight and nobody knows what this thing says except for you six or mm -hmm. hey. Um, if all that is happening is you're, you're retaining the code as it currently is written and you're transferring the jurisdiction from the city council to a legal court of law before a judge, I, I can understand the argument that's being presented. I, I can empathize with that, we'll say. And I, I but I also want to say this. I think Mr. Clark's a reasonable man. I don't know him personally that well. But I suspect he's a reasonable man. But we know that there's plenty of uh, people with chips on their shoulders in positions of authority, particularly in low-level positions of authority in local government. We can't anticipate that for all of eternity. And you're writing laws for a position, not for a person. You've got to bear that in mind. The city code also prohibits, as I'm sure you all know, a child 
from raising a hog, a sheep, or a goat in the city limits for 4-H or for the fair. The city code prohibits the sale or possession of a knife with a blade over three inches. I think there's a lot of examples there's, of that. There's you start th saying yes. this, this. I agree totally. So However, I'm just saying this is a starting point. Yes. What Jeff said, it goes from this to that. We haven't tried that. It's just a what is it? One, uh, two lot, four lines. If the code, there. if the code's not being enforced because you guys don't want to hear it after he issues the notice and 30 days expired and that person hasn't done anything, and the city council doesn't want to deal with that, and that's the reason nothing much will say has been done for the last five years. Well, I, I don't think it's that. I think it's the fact that you come here, we can talk about it, say, okay, give them time. Right. Six months later, it comes back, the same people, same place. Exactly. And, okay, now we're doing a, a, a Saturday cleanup, right. trying to help them mm -hmm. because it hadn't been done. Well, here's a question. Anything else for me? <laughs> Now there is another question. You take them to the judge, it gets judgment against them. Property don't get cleaned up. You went through another process, you tied up before the law, and you're still going to go out there and clean it up. You just now, there's, delay there's the process. A, there's a remedy to everything. I mean, you, you but you don't the process. But if you might be able to get 50% of that done just by the fact that saying there's an actual officer of court of law coming yeah. there to talk to them or to try to enforce it. At some, yeah, at some point, at some point, if you've got that five or ten percent that absolutely will not clean up, and they go to the judge, then yeah, it's going to have to come before the city council, and we're going to have to condemn that property and go through those. We'll see how far we get. Will he get a badge enforcement law? Will he get a badge, like an enforcement law badge? Do you need He's got one. Oh, you do. Okay. Uh, anything else from this council? Mm -hmm. All right, we are at. Uh, motion and second, or first, second, and third reading. I'll call for a, uh, uh, yeah, any, uh, any other discussion? I'll call for a vote to adopt the order. For the motion to adopt the order. Did you make it? I thought we already made the motion. I, I thought, thought we well, We've been talking a long time. Bradley did. I did. One second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> I'll call for a vote. Bradley? Yes. Hastings? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Pistol? Yes. Ward? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this point. Emergency clause? Yeah. This point. We're going to have motion to say the same rules and adopt the emergency clause. From I make the motion that we adopt. Motion to adopt. We have a second. Any other discussion? A call for a vote. Bradley? Yes. Hastings? Mm. Yes. Lynch? Yes. Pistol? Yes. Ford? Yes. 2020-02. Two. Okay, wow. Brings us, thank y'all, uh, everyone. Brings us to a resolution reporting the state uh, sales and use tax for uh, streets. This is uh, from Municipal League. They're just looking for some, uh, a show of solidarity from the cities. Uh, the Municipal League is saying this, this deals with our funding for streets. I don't know if y'all had a copy of that. You can, Pass it down to them. This is our 15% the 73rd. I think it expires in there. We get a lot of money from the state. The cities do 15% of a 30%. County get 15, uh, cities get 15. That's the way it's been. They want to extend that at some point in the future. This is just a show uh, in municipal league that uh, cities are on board with this. This affects our funding greatly. How we uh, put uh, asphalt on our streets. Without it, we, we'd be in trouble. The other option would be if, it, if we didn't do that, if the state didn't pass that, uh, we just have to pass the sales tax to do it. But I would recommend we adopt this and send it to the municipal. Is this, is this the sales tax increase that was passed in 2013? Yeah, we're working on a new one. 
cities we have 484 that's, that support this this is why the lobby the legislature say don't don't change it we, we need the money coming in so they were actually considering taking it off yeah. and, and like you said in the deal there's a lot unless amendments are put in there but i think they're going to pass that we might not hear you don't know but it's just in his belief, Mark Hayes thinks it would be good if everybody can say, look, 95% or 100% or 80% of our cities, you know, this is so for small cities. We didn't get this funding. What would we be at? What, 57000 That was the math that we yeah. did just based on that letter. So it's a half a percent. It's a half a percent on the state sales tax. And we're going to get fifty-seven thousand dollars, six and a half now, or six. Well, that's twenty-two dollars a person. We'd be better off to have a half percent on our own tax, and let them do away with the state. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you get more money, I'll say that. But a half a percent, two of them is one percent. Three of them is percent and a half. But it's up to you know. I, I recommend doing it. Of course, you know, a lot of. This work on 65 comes from that sales tax. Mm -hmm. All of these 65 projects come from that sales tax. All the road improvements come from that tax. <clears throat> and there is, there have a town hall meeting everywhere that anybody can go listen to to show where all the money is spent. And there's been numerous projects all over the state. The two going on here, every other road in the state, the improvements, it's all coming from that. But the presentations are out there. If you look on the state websites, it tells where all they're going to be at around the state. If you can go in there doing presentations and the people that are there to explain all about it, what it's for. Thank you. Any other discussion? I'll entertain a motion to second. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Any other discussion? I'll ask for a vote. Yes. 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 Y